Hi, thank you for coming to Optimized Dental Study Group. Um, today we have uh, Rizio Institute uh, with us and uh, we have two lovely ladies who have, I guess are the co-founders of this wonderful program that we have. And we're super excited to um, have them come on and talk to us a little bit about uh, clinical, their clinical um, uh, educational programs, as well as they have a few cool things that um, they're developing um, to help dental, the dental world with some staffing issues and some um, educational and kind of, I feel like uh, in the dental world right now, there's not a lot of clinical um, advice or upgrading and so they they do that as well to kind of keep things current and help people develop their skills on the clinical aspect of things because things do change quite a bit. Um, and I feel like changing more frequently than ever. And so it's kind of nice to have a place to go and like learn and brush up on your skills and um, develop yourself. And for um, clinics that are struggling to find the right resources, they can send people for training uh, and it allows them to um, utilize the program in a different way as well. So I will turn the time over um, to Casey and Carrie, and they are going to kind of walk us through what, what they're doing and, and how they're doing it. Perfect, thank you, Teresa. Um, I guess uh, we'll start by doing some introductions. So my name is Carrie Ann Thurlow, and I am a co-founder of Rizio with Casey. My part in the program was uh, initially some curriculum design and uh, policy creation and a lot of the behind the scenes business side of Rizio. And uh, of course, going through all of the different approval processes with our national board um, accreditation and advanced education and the College of Alberta Dental Assistants. Um, so I have worked with Casey in the industry for over 20 years now. We started together in Banff at a dental office there and we have um, done a whole lot of different things in dental together, including uh, working at a different college in Calgary for a number of years. Um, and so about four years ago, we ventured off to create Rizio and uh, this is us today, now in our third year of uh, running Intix. So we're really excited about that. And I will pass it over to Casey. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, so my name is Casey Sharp. I am the co-founder of Rizio as well. And uh, my role in developing the program is designing and creating e-learning content. So our program is a little bit different than your traditional um, dental assisting day program. We've created interactive e-learning modules in order to deliver this content to students all across Canada. So um, I create the e-learning content as well as um, I've taken over the role of an academic advisor. So I guide all our students through the program and offer support. And occasionally we still also teach in the clinic um, setting as well. And uh, so we prepared a presentation for you guys tonight to answer all the questions about what our existing program is all about, as well as some of our exciting um, endeavors that we have on the horizon. So I will pass it back to Carrie to start us off with the presentation. Perfect, thank you. So why did we create Rizio? We created Rizio so that we could offer access to education across Canada. We currently have students from far west BC all the way to uh, Manitoba. And um, we are expanding into the eastern provinces as well. Um, but you know, where our main intent was to be able to provide access to education for people that live in the smaller rural communities and uh, could not necessarily leave their hometown or their families or their jobs to go back to school. So this was an opportunity for us to be able to provide that to them. So a little bit about Casey and I, we've uh, given you some background uh, in our introductions. My background in education um, came uh, kind of a, a different path. So I was an RDA at one time, but the majority of my time in dental has been behind the scenes, either treatment coordinating, dental administration, or office management. And so I eventually went back to school to take my MBA and uh, now am working through midway through my PhD 
So um, it's a long journey and three of my most recent educations have been online learning. So I have uh, great respect for people who are working, have families and have to go through education in this manner. And uh, Casey with her education um, is an RDA as well and also went back to school to the University of Calgary for e-learning design. And, um, and of course, as she mentioned, she does all of the e-learning content for Rizio, um, among a whole lot of other things that Casey does. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so why choose online learning? Uh, after the presentation's done, we send whoever wants the link to this, we'll send it to you because we have some fun little videos that we've included in this. Um, if we played all of them, we would be here for a long time. So we probably won't play them all. Um, did you want to play this one, Casey, or no? Um, it's entirely up to you. Do you want me to start it? Do we probably have time? I think so. Is Yeah, as long as it doesn't, um, I guess, hold up your screen. Sometimes our videos are delayed a bit. No <laughs> cheese. I just told you I want cheese and chicken. Structure and freedom. Our program is not only special for the Thank you. I think the audio might have been a little bit quiet. I'm not sure if it every, everyone, but it was a little bit for me. Um, but nonetheless, we will continue on. And like I said, there's quite a few videos that we've got in this presentation. So we'll send it out and you guys can look at them at your leisure. Um, so our target audience is uh, people that are in the dental industry. Um, already in the industry and also people that aren't. So as you know, over the last couple of years uh, with the COVID pandemic, the dental industry has lost a lot of people who haven't come back. And so initially our plan was to offer education to people that were in the, the dental offices and upskill them into a dental assisting role. So perhaps dental, dental administrators, um, anyone that could be working the capacity of a STERI tech, and we were hoping that we could upskill people into these roles. And now we are kind of shifting our focus and looking to help dental offices recruit from outside the industry. Someone that they might find that has excellent customer service, get them into the industry and we can help train them. So it is mandatory that they are working in a dental office or volunteering for a minimum of 14 hours a week. Uh, the majority of our um, students in our program are working full-time 
but it really just depends on what they can handle and of course what their responsibilities are outside of work and school um, with family and things like that. All right, so student to instructor ratios. We are very proud of the fact that we have five students to one instructor, sometimes more um, instructors in the clinic at any given time. So that was one thing that was really important to us. When we are delivering a very intensive 12 day clinic module, we needed to ensure that we had enough operatories in our clinic and enough instructors to be able to have all of those students getting the type of learning that they deserve in that 12 days for the first clinical. And then of course the nine day clinical that we have at the end of the program. So um, we always have at least one instructor to five students and uh, during patient care clinics, Casey and I hop in there and it's a whole team of people with our students. And then the expectations of our students, we need them to take an active part in their learning. So we give them the information they need. We have more information than they could probably ever need online, but we've got um, a whole lot of activities that Casey has developed for online learning. And um, we ask that they take an active part in that and ensure that they are going through the learning content as they should and reaching out for help when they need to. So we also have tutoring that's available uh, from Casey and our other academic advisor, Jewel. So we offer quite a bit of support throughout the program for learners that uh, might need to have just a little extra. Um, I have a question for you. So for like the stereotax and the people that are moving up in upskilling, if you would, that's the phrase that you used. Um, do you find that, um, that there's a huge amount of time because lots of people do this while they're working, right? So they're doing it. So like, what is the time commitment, I guess, on average? Cause you can't really use probably person to person depending on how fast they go through the modules. We would say the average time commitment um, per week or hours per week or per month or whatever that someone's investing into these programs because they're usually typically working while they're doing it if they're a stereo tech or a dental admin. Yeah, exactly. So we are considered to be a full-time program with Alberta Advanced Ed because our program is roughly 20 hours a week online. So some students will take that full amount of time, if not more, and some students one week might not take quite that mm. much. And it really depends on the module they're in. Of course, our dental sciences units are quite heavy. And we find, you know, there's some modules, radiography, restorative dentistry, they are online and in those modules quite heavily. And so um, we really, we don't give them specific times that they have to be online. We don't do specific lecture times. Um, we leave that at 20 hours in the week up to them. So if they want to do all of their learning in the evenings, Monday to Friday, and uh, take the weekends off, then they can. Or if their evenings are busy with kids sports and they can only study online Saturdays and Sundays, then we let them do that too. It just depends on what's, what works for them. Okay, that's awesome. I think that's very flexible for most people. I feel like that would be a very... Um, reasonable. That's a reasonable time investment to do while you're working. Um, I feel like full time, twenty hours a week is is not unreasonable to to do it and still balance a bit of home life or some sort of reasonable life <laughs> in between. Yeah, yeah, and that's definitely one of the goals for us is to be able to have that flexibility and have that access to um, the online environment when it's convenient because everybody's schedule is so different. So all of our modules were thoughtfully designed in the layout. We intentionally created these modules in order to lay the foundational knowledge um, prior to coming to our term one clinical in order for our students to be able to maximize the skills to early on in the program to be, go, to be able to go back to their dental offices and be a real value and an asset to their team. So in term one, we have seven online theory modules and two clinical modules. So our online 
theory modules include um, the professional dental assisting, microbiology and infection control. So right away at module two, they have the foundational knowledge to um, be in the sterilization bay and very competently uh, be able to be a stereotech. Then we go into our foundations of dental assisting. This is all our dental sciences, vital signs and patient assessment, emergencies in the dental office, preventive dentistry, and our digital radiography. And then they come to Calgary for the 12 day clinical module, which we'll get into um, shortly what that entails. Um, and then once they're done, the clinic module in Calgary, they go back to their office, they can perform numerous skills in their office under the direction of a dentist, and then continue on with more theory. So in the term two um, theory, we include restorative dentistry, lab procedures, specialties, dental health in the uh, community where they are doing a, a community project within their own hometown, and our dental reception. They come back for a term two clinic module, which is nine days. And then following a successful term two clinic, they go back and do their final practicum, 120 hour practicum in the office that they've already been working in. And at this point they can utilize all of their skills. And our program is licensed through Alberta Advanced Education. So it is a requirement in Alberta that all programs go through the approval, program approval process with the College of Alberta Dental Assistants, with CADA. Our program completed that approval process um, in 2019. And this June, so just in a, in a month or so, we will be hosting the CDAC team for accreditation. And that um, survey continues every two to four years from here on out. And our program, has gained uh, written exam eligibility through the National Dental Assisting Examining Board, so the NDAB, and our students are eligible to write that exam, allowing them to access, um, practice to practice all across Canada. And we've had um, five graduates write the national board exam at this stage, and all were 100 all, we had 100% success rate. They were all successful on the national board exam with an average of approximately 15% higher than the national average. So we're very proud of our first graduates. That is, um, Casey. Um, oh wait, oh, yeah, go sorry. ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just curious, um, is someone able to go through your program, not like do the program, but challenge the exam with you guys? Um, somebody that hasn't taken any other dental, formal dental assisting education would have to do the whole program without challenging exams. So if they have had the, um, so if they were a dental assistant prior and need to recertify, they could challenge the exam. Is that the case that you're talking about? Or um, is it the case of like, because we get a lot of like foreign trained dentists that are basically come here and then they're like, they can't obviously be dentists and they can't certify for dentistry right now but they go into the dental assisting program um, a lot of them do uh is that something that they could challenge the exam for if they were um trained previously or like what is the regulation regulations on that yeah i'll let carrie explain that does use the more the the registrar yeah so with the national board dentists that are coming over foreign trained dentists can provide their curriculum to the National Dental Assisting Examining Board to have the curriculum assessed. And then mm -hmm. if it's deemed that it is on par with the curriculums in Canada, they can challenge the National Board exam. Um, it's quite a process to go through that with the National Board. And so some don't. If they decide not to go that route and challenge the National Board exam, they have to register in a program and take the full program, dental assisting program. Okay. That's awesome. Thanks. So it's always been, I mean, people ask us all the time and I'm just like, I don't know, you have to ask someone that's in that uh, area or field because that's not where our expertise lies, obviously, but yeah, it's good to know because we do get asked that question a lot. And I think we'll continue to be asked that question. I don't think it's going to go away for sure. Yeah. And then the other thing is there's a couple different scenarios. Like we've had a few people that have switched over to our program from Vancouver community college yeah. and if someone has taken the first module, which is um, professionalism, the history of dentistry, that kind of thing, if we can assess the learning outcomes against ours, and if they're fairly similar, like that first module, mm -hmm. um, then we credit them that first module, and then they can jump straight into module two. Um, 
If someone has taken a dental assisting program in the past and written the national board exam three times and failed it all three times, it's mandated that they take the full program again. So that's mandated from the national board. So in that case, we can't have them just go in and challenge exams. So then for someone that maybe is looking to get back into being a dental assistant after not being for a while, and they, because I know research is only allowed in a certain certain period of time there's like a bunch of regulations for that but then if you're like past those um regulations um would they have to take the course like your course entirely again or would you be able to challenge the exam even though they've taken all the course material previously and had a ha basically their membership lapsed is all that happened right yeah so if their membership lapsed and it was still within that time frame that had deemed them eligible to just go and do their recertification course then they can do that um and that would be under the direction of cada that the, the only ones who would be able to decide that for them um if not if they weren't eligible for that they would have to take the full program again because our prior learning assessment uh, we only look at what someone has done within the past two years. And the reason we do that is because um, not that curriculum necessarily has changed across Canada in two years, but we also know that if that student is becoming a Rizio student, we want to ensure that they have learned and know those learning outcomes before going into clinic and then going into the national board exam. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. All right, so Casey, why don't you play this video? So we wanted to play you the video of our clinic before we get into the next section where we explain the clinic. So this is our Rizio Institute Clinic in Calgary, and it is solely our clinic. We don't use it for any other dentistry or uh, we don't share it with anyone. It's uh, just all ours and we absolutely love it. So I'll let you play that, Casey. So we took over this clinic. It was a, kind of an abandoned clinic, actually. And um, it was a dental corp clinic that was a previous ortho office. And so um, our regional manager down here in Calgary for dental corp took us on a tour and we were uh, thrilled. It didn't look like that when we walked through it the first time. It was <laughs> full of boxes and quite dirty and it had been abandoned for a couple of years. So we took it over and went in there and spent a weekend cleaning and got it all uh, fixed up and ready to go for Rizio. And um, we were very, very fortunate to have different companies like uh, South Calgary Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. Uh, they moved out of our building into a newer building and sold us some x-ray equipment at an extremely reduced price. And we had dental chairs donated to us and um, software, Dentrix and Cydexis and um, a whole lot of things donated to our clinic. So we were lucky to have some really great people in our corner and uh, we got that clinic up and running and we um, signed a sublease with Dental Corp. So we now rent that from them and uh, that is our space. And so it's got lots of space for doing um, anything we need to do with students for student huddles. And um, we have 11 operatories. So we have enough space for all of our students to have their own operatories and um, lots of great digital technology, which we're extremely proud of. So the on-site clinic modules, the first one, the students in that 12 days learn dental dam, topical anesthetic, perigo dressing. They do those evaluations strictly on either a dexter mannequin or one another. And then the rest of the skills that you see there, um, so coronal polishing, fluoride, dental radiography, sealants and desensitizing. We teach them those skills and they move on to doing those at the last three days of that 12 day module. And they do that in the patient care clinic. So we do all the evaluating on the live patients that we bring in. 
And then we also teach the students the um, recording of the PSR and the periodontal probe. So when we initially started the program approval process, we were actually going to be teaching probing. And as you know, the programs in Alberta have, uh, have had to remove that from their programs. So no one any longer teaches that as a skill within their program. So then the students come back at the end of the program. So for nine days at the end of their theory, and that's where they learn most of the restorative side of the dentistry and oral skills. So we teach them the traditional impressions and we also teach the digital impression scanning. We uh, purchased an iTero scanner and we teach them that. We also do the pouring up and trimming of models, whitening trays and sports guards. We do the application, we teach them the application of the whitening trays with the whitening gel, post-op instructions, bases and liners, temp restorations, the matrices, wedges, and provisional coverage crown and bridge. And then uh, the last skill is suture removal. So provisional coverage crown and bridge was also another skill that um, programs had the option of either keeping in their program or removing as a postgraduate skill. And we chose to keep it in our program. Okay, so the way we deliver our um, online content is through a learning management system, an LMS um, called Absorb. And uh, we find that this system is really robust. It um, checks all the boxes for us in the sense that we need it to be fast and we need um, to house all of our different learning activities as well as administer exams. Um, and that system, the Absorb, um, platform does everything for us. So we are very happy. And we have another little video here just to give you a little run through of what our students would see when they log on to their online environment. Okay, hey, so our LMS is quite interactive. We're able to add uh, videos and click through interactive eLearn content as well as review modules. Um, we have the ability to add documents and also our exams. And our exams are proctored by a third party uh, proctoring software called Examity. So our students are able to take their exams whenever it suits them on demand 24 seven. Um, and it's only at a cost of $8 USD. So quite affordable and um, definitely flexible. Um, they log into their account and they can take those exams, as long as it's before the deadline that we set up, they have the flexibility to be able to do it when it suits them, whether it be early morning or evening, depending on their family life and their schedule. So we're finding that students are really enjoying that flexibility. And do you have any questions at all about the online um, environment or the learning management system before we move on to the next um, topic?
Um, I think my main question is, and maybe there's some other questions, if people have some in the chat, you can send them through. Um, but my main question is, and we kind of talked about this before, is just like the ability to balance home and family life. Um, is there set time frames for those modules? Like, do they have to be completed, like start to finish in like, you know, when you open one, you have like one week to do it or two weeks to do it. Like what's the time frames look like for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so depending on the amount of content in the modules, we give um, anywhere between three to six weeks per module. So we've set out a timeline um, that our students are um, expected to follow. However, there's no um, synchronous learning. They can self-study and log on whenever it's suitable for their schedule, as long as it falls within the deadlines of the module. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, just because like we had mentioned before, like flexibility is obviously a main driver in, of doing these online programs. And if that's the case, then yeah, just trying to get it within a time frame is important. But like if that is a little bit more open, I do love, however, that you guys do the online exams. Um, that is amazing and will be such a um, it's such a bonus for people taking these things because if you ever have taken a lot of these courses online sometimes you still have to go in and write the exam and it has to be proper you know someone has to be there to do it proctoring it and it's just nice that you guys have that um availability to do it here which is like in your house and just get it done when you need to which is awesome yeah, thank you. Yeah, the feedback from our students is that they love the flexibility of the online proctoring, but they also love the structure of having deadlines because we all know that um, things can slip and other, you know, life happens. And so having a certain deadline um, for them to have as a goal is the feedback has been that our students really like that structure as an overarching structure, but the flexibility within those guidelines. Yeah, it's, it's a really great layout and a really good plan. And I feel like attainable for most personality types because we know that uh, there's the procrastinators and um, I'm not one of those people, maybe a little bit I am, but <laughs> but I feel like it would be very helpful to have that and, and um, be able to keep a healthy mark system and get the understanding that you need. Because I feel like uh, there's not that many RDAs being put out into the working world right now consistently. And so having uh, just even 11 more people every time they go through is just a very, very good thing for the dental world right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so our national board exam as well has all, it's all digital as well. So when someone goes in to write the national board exam, they would go into one of the proctoring sites in uh, the nearest city to them and they would take the national board exam online. So it's nice because in our program, everything they do is online, including their exams. And so it mirrors what they'll see once they get to that final national exam. That's awesome. That's super great. Cause yeah, again, just traveling and especially if you're in rural communities, which I think you guys really cater to a lot. Um, at least I feel like you, you cater a lot to that rural communities. Like if you're going in like driving, you know, you're in Saskatchewan, whatever, driving into Calgary to do your thing. It's a, it's a bigger commitment to do that two week thing. But if you can do everything else at home and that doesn't seem like such a big um, deal as opposed to moving away and going to school and doing doing that. Um, all right, so to finish off our presentation, we wanted to talk about the investment for the program. So the program right now is 12,500 and we divide that between the first half and the second half for fees. So it, it uh, makes it a little bit more affordable for dental offices and students that are paying for it themselves. So the first half of the payment we take is 7,500 up front, and then we do a term two payment that is 5,000. And then the textbooks are 310. So we do order the textbooks for our students. They get delivered right to their door. And um, the employers that are putting their staff through this program are eligible to apply for the job grant. So we, as uh, we've started this program, we've learned that all of the different programs are, sorry, provinces have different job grant programs that cover different amounts. And yeah, it's really sporadic all over the place. It is, and it changes every year because each province is allocated a different amount of money every year. And so what they decide to do with that money is up to them. 
Uh, so for instance, in Saskatchewan, our students are only eligible for job grant funding for the second half. So the, the final 5,000, their dental offices can apply for that. And in Alberta, uh, dental offices can apply for the whole thing, but they have to do it in chunks of four courses at a time. And so now that we've been able to kind of outline what each province needs for a job grant application, we've developed a template that we send to dental offices and they can use that to apply for the job grant online. That's awesome. I know that we do the job grant as well for our program. So it's, it's such a, a big, um, a big sell for not only the program, but like it allows smaller entrepreneurial, um, which is what dentistry is, like allows them to kind of excel their team and give them a little bit of a boost without having to pay so much out of pocket for them. So it's such, I think if you're uh, in a dental practice in a management role or an ownership role, utilizing the job training grants is just such a smart um, plan because you're able to then um, maximize the amount of education your team has. And we all know that the more education a team has, the better patient care there is, the better patient care there is. It feeds into better production goals because people are uh, able to communicate better. They're able to understand the workflow. They're able to understand how they interact as a team. There's just so many benefits to education in a practice. Um, and if you can use the job grant, job grant, sorry, to get ahead uh, with a, like just a little bit of savings on your end is just, is such a massive thing for us to have. And we're super pumped to have Alberta um, be able to invest into the small business like they are right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so um, maybe you can just let us know if uh, maybe in the chat, if you would like to have the presentation sent to you and we can email that off to you and then you can check out some of the videos in more detail. Um, I think Casey, you've got our website up right now. So I'll pass it back to you to talk about this. All right, so we do offer a free online course um, and this is geared for um, prospective students that don't have any dental knowledge. So uh, working in a capacity like admin and they just want to get a little bit of that dental knowledge to be able to communicate better with their other team members. So this is a uh, self-paced, um, you know, online course. It's a little bit of a taste of what you would expect in our uh, full program. And it's just simply given out by signing up for this course on our website. So you'll benefit from the free online course if you work in dental and men and want to learn more about the clinical side of the industry. If you're thinking about taking the distance delivery diploma program and just want to try out the online format, or if you're looking to get into a dental office and you just need a little information to get your foot in the door um, to get that first position. So the course cover um, like a high level terminology, tooth identification, numbering systems, the different procedures, um, a radiography overview, as well as some treatment planning. So we make it available for free so that anyone interested in a dental assisting career has the resources that they need to get started. And so we understand that um, students or prospective students are wanting to get into a dental office in some capacity. So that could also be the, as a Steritech. So what we're working on, what we have on the horizon is a jumpstart program in collaboration with Patterson Dental. And that course will be our dental basics plus a clinical basics um, course as well, which is gonna go over some of the different um, sectioning and tray setups, as well as like um, your basics on how to pass instruments, instrument transfer, the different types of instruments that you're transferring. And then also the full um, module on microbiology and infection control. So this information will be uh, vital in order to be able to work as a Steritech. And then if those um, students of the Jumpstart program, if they like the online format, if they like the industry, and then they still want to continue growth within the dental industry and become a dental assistant, Rizzi will actually give them credit for the second module in our full program and because they've taken our Jumpstart program. So it's a really great way to get in, be really um, helpful and be an asset to a dental team 
and with just a short course to, to get that foundational knowledge. That's awesome. I'm, I just have a few things that someone private chatted me. So I'll just throw this out here. Um, sorry, bear with me. I just have to make it bigger because my old eyes. Okay, here we go. Uh, so you can find, and so someone just asking about where they find the course content for that free basic course. Do you just send it out to people or is it um, just on your website? Yeah, so it'll be an automated um, immediate link. So once they sign up here, and this will be under our web, on our website, so rizziodental.com, under enroll, free online course. We just need first, last name, and email, and then it'll be an automated email right after sign up with that link so they can get started right away. Awesome. And then I know that we have talked to you guys previously about um, uh, people, not recruitment, but like people trying to find places to go to clinics. So if they're starting to um, go into or look into going into a practice, not necessarily they haven't picked a practice, but they're looking to get into a dental assisting, um, but they need to help obviously you have to have a home clinic. Are you guys helping them find the clinic in that area? Like, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have quite a few dental offices that have reached out to us that would like their name on a list. If we ever have students applying that don't have an office. Um, we do have students, I would say probably once a month, we get someone who's applying for the program that isn't from the dental industry. And I have been able to place all of them within days of them looking for an opportunity to, opportunity to either work or volunteer in an office. So some of the people applying don't actually want to do any type of um, you know, full-time work or even part-time work. They'd rather go in for their 14 hours and volunteer. So it just depends on what they're looking for. And we haven't had a problem placing anyone. Yeah, I can't imagine <laughs> that the desperate state that people are in right now. I can't imagine that would be very difficult. Um, Michelle, do you have a question? I think you raised your hand there. So I was just wondering what kind of commitment, I'm going to call it the host dental office, has to give in order to support the student. So in order to support the student, we want them to be mentors. We want the dentist to be able to show them as many procedures as possible, just bringing them into, into the operatory and showing them what they're doing. Um, we need to have a mentoring RDA in the office. So someone that can kind of take them under their wing and show them the ropes of the office. So we would like to see the students doing different tasks in different capacities. So if they can do dental administration, that's excellent. If they can do Steritech, that's excellent too. If they can be turning rooms over and helping set operatories up and clean operatories. And even in some of the rural tiny communities, we have students that are just simply sitting chair side, suctioning and doing nothing intraorally until they've come to Calgary and gotten the training on it. Um, we want them having as much exposure as possible to the different things that happen in that office, whether it's dental administration all the way to the clinic side. So, um, you know, we have people who come into their first clinic module that are dental receptionists and have spent next to no time in the back clinic side. And so we have a little bit more hands on you know, catch up to do with them once we get them in the clinic. And then we have students who've been chair-side assisting with their dentist for two or three years, and we get them into the clinic setting and they're quite well-rounded. So it, it really just depends. Um, but we're looking mainly for that mentorship within the office. That's really reasonable. It's not a huge amount of commitment. You just have to have someone who like has done it before and make sure that it goes right and, and that they feel supported during the whole process, which is ideal because we know that um, support and that's like one of the things that we preach a lot is like support and training um, and then using your skills consistently is what, you know, solidifies a good education and, and those make good habits, which make um, good workflow. So yeah, it's a really, really smart um, idea to have that mentorship. Um, we just know that like sometimes working or having, you guys obviously have to have a dentist to sign off as well that they're doing it. Yeah, perfect. Um, 
but I noticed that like the dentists don't have as much engagement, at least if there's multiple RDAs in the clinic already, they have less engagement with their team other than usually telling them what they did wrong <laughs> as opposed to um, teaching them how to do it better. I think that happens a lot and um, educating I think having an RDA that's well-educated or knows what they're doing will give them a lot more advice um, on how to be better. Also, we find that, and I don't know if this happens a lot on your end, but we're finding that um, dentists sometimes will uh, give advice, but they're doing it from their own perspective as opposed to um, an RDA's perspective. Yeah, you're nodding your head. That's the face of like, you get it. Because I, and this is something because I'm not an RDA. So I'm not clinical at all. I understand a lot of clinical procedures. I understand a lot, but I, I've never sat chair side. And it was very interesting to me that this conversation came up um, recently about how the dentist was like explaining to the RDA how they should do certain things. And then when they talk to a more veteran RDA, they go, well, you're telling them how you think it should be done, but they need to pay attention to like everything else, not, not just what you're doing. And I thought, oh yeah, that makes sense. They're, they're the help me. They're the person that makes everything easier, but they're got, you know, they're thinking about what's happening next. They're thinking about what, what needs to happen um, you know, what instrument needs to be handed in, what, whatever needs to be done, all the clinical things that need to be done, not just the suction needs to be here and that. And so it is nice to have an RDA mentor. And I think that is a fantastic, um, that's something different. I think that you guys do that is that other practicum students have come to me that they haven't had that. So I think that's a really, really smart plan. And I feel like um, probably aids in your success rate um, on your board exams as well through your team. So that's well done. I like that a lot. Yeah. And we're continually telling our students to reach out to their team. This is a really a collaborative effort and it takes, you know, the dentist and the team, the student, their family, it takes everyone that's around them and going through this with them for them to be successful. It's not just a solo adventure that they're on. So we're hoping that the dental team is a source of information for them throughout the whole program. Yeah, that's, that's, I think it would be very sad if it wasn't, because <laughs> it would be very difficult to complete that program on your own. I mean, not that it's impossible, but more difficult if you have um, friends or a friend to kind of help you out or like a, a big brother, big sister program, something like that is always like really nice. Yeah. Let's take a look. I think there's just one more question here. Um, can assistants go through many clinics and get experience or just one? I'm assuming it's probably just one, one clinic for your whole practicum, unless you have to change for some reason. Yeah. Typically students will stay with the same dental office. Most students are employed in that office. And so they'll stay there for the duration of the program and hopefully many years afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have students who midway through the program will move or they'll just switch offices for whatever reason, perhaps it wasn't a good fit. And, um, we do give them the opportunity to go to another office. We give them two weeks to find another office if they do. So let's say we have a situation where a, a student was dismissed from an office. We give them two weeks to find a new one. And again, in our industry right now, that hasn't been a problem. No. I think out of all of our students, maybe one has had that happen and found another office within a week, um, but it's not typical that that would happen. And then sometimes we'll have students that will do volunteer work at one office and then have a part-time job at another office just to get different experience in two different areas. We've had that in the Red Deer area. <clears throat> and then um, we have also students in our program whose dentists have multiple locations. And so they will have one sponsoring dentist in one location, but they might pop over to another clinic one day and work. And so that's completely fine with us as well, as long as they're being mentored and as long as everything that's um, going on is under the direction of their dentist. Okay, awesome. Um, I think that's it for questions on my end. I noticed that you guys have all your contact information up here, which is awesome. So thank you for that. This will, oh, um, 
Nandeep Singh was raising your hand. You do you have a question? Yeah, hi there. Actually, I didn't join the meeting earlier, so um, sorry about the video call. I will be just audio. And uh, actually, I am working in a dental clinic. So the question is: uh, right now, I am on work permit, not on, not as a permanent resident. So I just want to know that is it I can do this program if I have don't don't have any permanent residency. As of right now, you have to be a permanent resident in order to take the program. Um, to have someone on a work permit or um, an international student, we have to go through a bit of a different designation process with Alberta Advanced Education, which we have not done yet. So at this time, our students have to be permanent residents. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's a great question because I didn't even think about that. <clears throat> then it probably will come up a lot more, I would imagine, um, as as things change in our dynamic in the dentist, dentistry field. So I'm going to lose my voice here. It's like all of a sudden just went off. Um, okay, so this obviously gets posted on YouTube. So we're going to tag all your stuff in there as well. Um, and we'll make sure that this goes out on our social medias. But you guys have a ton of things to offer. And we are just like so pumped that you guys are local to Alberta um, and are helping us kind of develop and grow more dental assistance um, in our area, which I think hopefully more people, more and more students um, come on and, and are able to kind of fill the backlog of shortage that we have right now, because it's really sad, actually, how many people we lost during COVID uh, as far as RDAs. And so because of that, we're just so thrilled that you guys are offering this program. The last question I have for you guys is how often are you cycling your program through? Like, is it running, you know, every nine months or is it running like consistently or just as you get the student workflow? Like, how does that program, do I guess, start up? When does it start? When does it end? That kind of stuff. So we run it monthly and we only take a maximum of 10 students per month. So we keep our intake small. That's why we run one every month. So mm -hmm. that by the time those students get to see us in the clinic module, we have small numbers. We never have more than 10 students in the clinic module at a time. And um, we always keep our student to facilitator ratios as we advertise, which is nice. So we do offer an intake every month. Um, they are offered on the last Monday of every month. So the next one coming up is May 30th and then so on and so on, June 27th and every final Monday afterwards. Okay, that's, that's awesome. Um, and consistently outputting um, trained RDAs is fantastic. Uh, the more we can get, the better. And, and you guys, I know, have like a really great program and I know some people going through it right now and they're loving it. So um, kudos to you guys for all you're doing to help kind of advance dentistry right now. Uh, and we're just so excited for what you guys offer and uh, the kind of adventure you um, and Casey uh, are doing and, and the kind of waves you're making in the dentistry field. So we're super pumped to be a part of um, what you guys have going on. And we want to thank you for coming on tonight and we'll make sure to tag you and all this stuff. And if anybody has any um, questions or needs to reach out to them, obviously the information is posted on the screen right now and we will uh, post it on our YouTube channel and send it out in our newsletter as well. So thank you so much ladies for joining us tonight and you guys have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for having us. No problem. Take care. Bye. Bye.